Hello, kumusta mga Pinoy? Um, this is Hart. Welcome back to my channel. So let's all welcome um, Brandon Boyd on the show. Right away. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, so thank you so much for you know, uh, inviting us over to yeah. your beautiful home, your studio where the magic happens <laughs> yeah. with your music and your arts. Yeah. Um, you know, your music was like the soundtrack of almost everyone in their youth and oh. a lot of my friends are going gaga goo goo right now that I am with you. <laughs> so just want to get that out there. Um, and yeah, so wait, we, of course you've been asked many questions, I mean, about this, but how did it start? Like, what age did you start? Like, your love for the arts and music? Hmm. Well, uh, specifically music or specifically art or just in general? In general. I think that it may have been uh, cooked into me before. Mm. I'm even, I, before I can remember. Mm -hmm. My earliest memories are drawing and Drawing actually is some of my earliest mm -hmm. memory. Um, music was always a part of my environment, mm -hmm. but I didn't really express myself musically um, to my knowledge until I was like a teenager, really when I started uh, the band Incubus with my friends in high school. So we started the band Incubus when we were 15. Mm -hmm. And um, I had never really tried to sing. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was writing a little bit, like yeah. writing poetry and things. Yeah. Um, but the very first songs I ever tried to write were with this band. Yeah. And unfortunately, you can actually find those songs like on iTunes and yeah. YouTube. Yeah. So part of me wishes that you couldn't find those songs because <laughs> if they sort of got better as we went along. No, it was meant to be the way it was. I suppose yeah. so, yeah. So to answer your question, I think that um, I've always had a, a deep reverence but also a fascination with um, creativity mm -hmm. and uh, being creatively expressive. Yeah. So as a young person I had a hard time finding my voice yeah. and really know how to express myself yeah. verbally mm -hmm. so I was encouraged to express myself in other ways. Writing and all of that. Yeah. Um, so like how is Incubus now? Like what are you guys doing? Like everybody is wondering. Mm. Um, of course we had our chit chats behind camera but we got share. <laughs> right. Uh, well like Literally everyone else in the world over the last um, year and, and a bit, we've been kind of uh, frustrating, mm -hmm. frustratedly uh, holding back mm -hmm. and kind of just waiting and doing everything that we can to keep each other and our loved ones safe. And um, But uh, we recently have just been rehearsing for uh, some upcoming shows, which start at the end of this month in August. Mm -hmm. And we are preparing to do a uh, live stream concert event that's going to celebrate um, the 20th anniversary of our record Morning View, which wow. came out 20 years wow. ago this year. And so it's going to air, I believe, in November. Oh, there you go. It's going to air in November. Don't yeah. forget. Okay, in the Philippines, and uh, a lot of people, you know, you're a superstar there and they worship you like a god. Um, <laughs> but they don't know that you paint. Um, mm. And I, you know, I love your work. I think it's so beautiful. And I mean, is there like, how did that start? And when did it start? And uh, is it sort of, how is it different from your music? Or is it kind of like colliding in a way? In a way, they do kind of collide. Um, and they, they do intersect at certain points. Um, I couldn't tell you which one has like priority. Sometimes mm -hmm. one of the modalities demands priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, it's time to make music. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm busy painting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and true. music's like, no, 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 no. You gotta go. This song is gonna yeah. happen right now, yeah. whether you like it or not. Um, so it's interesting like that. And I suppose one of the things that I've learned amongst my process is to listen mm -hmm. to those intuitions like when it's time to paint like, I'm like uh, I gotta go yeah <laughs> gotta go. So you don't want to miss it exactly yeah. you know like muse is something that is uh, it's a beautiful thing and it's beautiful to have muse in the room with you and so oh, I treat sure. it with a kind of reverence yeah. Yeah. it's like she's here yeah. yeah 
quick, you know, like so, set the table. Yeah, she's yeah. Here. So like she, I mean, what is your process? I mean, is you do you have a muse? What inspires you? I mean, it's different. Like for me, I'm I have to be extremely sad or extremely happy to paint. Mm. Anything in between is a struggle for me. Interesting. Yeah. But for you, how is it? It's uh, I definitely paint and make music when I'm sad, mm -hmm. but I also paint and make music when I'm happy. But I've learned to paint and make music in the interim as well. Yeah. Because there's really interesting material in that interim. And yeah. I know that that's a common refrain from a lot of artists, is like it, it takes a one end of the extreme or the other mm -hmm. to tip you into yeah. that creativity. Um, but I've, uh, I've just learned just for me personally in my process that the interim between extreme sadness or extreme happiness, yeah. um, you get to exercise. Yeah. So it's like you're training. Mm -hmm. And then so you, if you do tip into one of those extremes, mm -hmm then you're, you're practiced yeah. and you're ready for maybe those moments of, yeah. of brilliance if they want to come through. I guess it's like also as like being an actor. I, I mean, suppose. It's, it's impossible that you're sad all the time. So mm -hmm. you have to like kind of switch a, a, I mean, push a button or something for you to activate it in some way. Some people are better at it than others. I'm yeah. fascinated by people that can like cry on contact, you know. Do you have this skill? I'm not going to ask you to do it, but I'm I just... I can't, I don't want to say I do because you might think I'm up. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> so I'm kind of miserable in a way. I'm kind of messed up in a beautiful way, but sure. I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but tell me about your women. I love painting women. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen these women before, but who inspires your, who is that girl like on your painting? Um, these are, these are actually older pieces, mm -hmm. um, the ones that are behind me. Um, and before I describe that, I just want to maybe try and clarify something. When I say muse and refer to it in a feminine, mm -hmm. um, it, that's only because in my experience of inspiration, it has an overwhelmingly feminine presence. I agree. When it arrives, it's something that is, um, it's pregnant yes, with potential. Yeah. It's like a vessel mm -hmm. that is giving birth to something, yeah. you know what I mean? I it's love that, it's yeah. less of a sword and more of a, more of a chalice, That's right. so to speak. Yeah. So it, it, it feels feminine to me. Um, but uh, yeah, painting women, I, I do abstract stuff, obviously. I see, I, it's beautiful. It's really fun to just throw paint and totally. move lines and everything, yeah. feels like magic. But something about painting women that I feel like I'm trying to uh, understand the complexity mm -hmm. of femininity, like its inherent kind of beautiful complexity. Yeah. And it's impossible to fully understand being uh, of the masculine energy. Mm -hmm. So that it feels uh, right to try and balance my sort of inherent masculinity with an attempt to understand mm -hmm. femininity. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And so I'm constantly trying to learn about trying to capture femininity and my, my girlfriend Sarah yeah. is an amazing she's a dancer she's a dancer and she's, she's also an actress so she yeah. can channel those emotions exactly. very beautifully into her work and so it's um, it's challenging to capture but it's really fun to try yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's beautiful though I mean yeah. painting is definitely a movement a dance yeah beautiful it's yeah. also a song true that you can't hear yeah. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Moonlight Create, uh, Moonlight Arts Creative. Yeah. How did this come about? Like, I, this is so nice, and I, I'm so excited to talk about it because it just it represents so many artists and uh, artists that you don't know paint. So how did this start? Mm -hmm. It's been kind of a long time coming. The the idea of what has become Moonlight Arts Collective. We um, I have been doing what I do as a musician, but also a painter for quite a long time. Um, this strange moment in the world happened with the pandemic and I had just enough time to sit still mm -hmm. and um, focus very intently on my painting for mm -hmm. a minute, just because we didn't know what was going to happen yeah. over the next six months or a year. So I was making lots of music and um, actually have a, a solo record that's going to come out mm -hmm. in a couple of months that I recorded during the lockdown. but. Um, I was doing all this painting and doing print releases and slowly over the years I've been meeting other musicians and other actors and mm -hmm. stuff who are these fantastic painters, mm -hmm. visual artists mm -hmm. on top of their, uh, what their, people know, what people know them for. Mm -hmm. And I just 
became kind of obsessed with this idea, like the idea essentially is find the others. Yeah. You know, create like like find your community. Yeah. And so I became interested in this idea of finding other people who approach creativity similarly to the way that I do. Yeah. Which is it's not linear. Yeah. It's not a straight line. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a thing that does this yeah. and then it goes over here for mm -hmm. a while and goes over here. And instead of trying to hammer it into line, celebrating its kind of branch effect, yeah. you yeah. know? And so um, my neighbor right across the street, mm -hmm. Rob, uh, he and I were musing about stuff and then my longtime art manager, Jen DeSisto, her and I were always in, in contact about this. And then our friend uh, Pietro Truba, who is a longtime printmaker from Detroit, mm -hmm. uh, we just put our heads together and we were like, I think it's time. Yeah. That we actually like kind of put a ring on it, so to speak. Why Moonlight Arts Creative? I mean, how did you come up with that? We, we had a couple of different names initially. Mm -hmm. And we almost went with a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. But then we settled on Moonlight Arts Collective because um, it sounds kind of sexy. Yeah, it is really nice. The term Moonlight is, there's something uh, sort of mysterious also. Mm -hmm very feminine actually mm -hmm. the moon is sort of the, the divine yeah. uh, goddess energy and uh, but we there was like a tongue-in-cheek element to it as well where it's like we're looking for uh, creative people who we know from one thing who moonlight as painters mm -hmm. volume one is dropping tell mm -hmm. us about volume one I'm very excited and how did you come up with selecting the artists that would be part of volume one we started uh, close to home. Mm -hmm. We started with um, people who I already know and love and I've worked with mm -hmm. for quite some time. So the very first release is uh, with a an, one of my oldest friends in the world actually. His name is Brian Bowen Smith and he's a photographer who I'd actually love for you to meet at some mm -hmm. point because I feel like you guys would. Is sort of the, the he's the consummate polymath. Like he went to school for, uh, he has a degree in criminology. Mm -hmm. He was a professional gymnast. He was a professional skater. He uh, was an actor. He actually appeared on an episode of Friends. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll point you to the episode. He's really funny in it. Uh, and this was a long time ago. But he uh, became interested in photography uh, because he was shooting his friends when he was a pro skater. Mm -hmm. And he became the guy that, as he got older, started shooting the younger kids coming up. And uh, then he got a job as the assistant for the very famous fashion photographer, Herb Ritz. Mm -hmm. And Herb uh, gave Brian his first camera. And so Brian started shooting more seriously. I met Brian, I think in 1997, mm -hmm. at a concert where we were opening up for the Wu-Tang Clan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just became friends and we invited him to come on tour with us as our tour photographer. And I found out later that it was his first paying gig as a photographer to come out with us. And so he came on the road with us for years. He traveled all over the world with us. He came to the Philippines with us. He like shot album artwork, tour booklets, <laughs> all of our... Anything, Basically everything. Everything for a period of time. So anyway, uh, Brian to me is like the ultimate moonlighter because okay. he does. Yeah, he has so many branches. So many branches on yeah. this tree, but he. So he shot uh, my girlfriend Sarah mm -hmm. uh, as a ballerina, and he called the piece "Tiny Dancer." And so, a little bit like how when I got your prints to collaborate mm -hmm. with, which we'll get to obviously, I saw these pieces and I was like, I can't touch these. <laughs> like they're perfect. They're perfect exactly how they are. He's like, no, nah, do your worst, do your yeah. worst. So I just started, the pictures of her are, they're in movement. Mm -hmm. It's her dancing and spinning and wow. they're gorgeous. I'll show you them when we're finished. But um, I started painting like rainbows exploding out of her chest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and somehow it works. And so uh, that's gonna be our first release. And uh, Alia Shaket, she's an amazing actor. Uh, people probably know from the show Arrested Development mm -hmm. and um, as he was saying her own show on HBO it's called a Search Party. Um, she's a phenomenal artist she's like I was I don't know why I was shocked I'm, I'm the only problem with this whole project is gonna I'm gonna be less and less surprised yes because the more we go into it, it's like mm -hmm. of course you're a good artist mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? You're a brilliant actor, mm -hmm. or you're an amazing dancer or athlete. Of course you, because intelligence isn't, once yeah. again, it's not yeah. linear. It's just not that, one yeah. dimensional. We just haven't given ourselves permission exactly. to branch out. So anyway, Alia Shawkat, <laughs> we're doing a release with Norman Reedus mm -hmm. from The Walking Dead. Um, Les Claypool from the band Primus. Mm -hmm. There's this really talented artist named Heart Evangelista who we're doing a release with. Which... Say it again, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of a, that, okay. there's more, but that's, that's just sort of a, a Okay, snippet. so I mean, I'm so excited for everyone to see that. Um, there are a lot of, you know, art fanatics in the Philippines and support arts, and it would be really, really great for you guys to support also this, what, what Brandon's doing. Um, and yeah, I think that concludes our interview, but I would love you to, you know, say a little something to your Filipino audience fans mm. that love you so much. So there you have it. There they are. Hi everybody, it's me, Brandon. I miss you guys. <laughs> it's been too long. I hope uh, that I get to come back to the Philippines one of these days, hopefully sooner than later. And uh, we should do an art show together. We should. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely, we'll create a bubble. Yeah. If you guys are willing to quarantine for 10 days <laughs> and then you could come to the event, that would be perfect. Right. And we promise we'll be super duper cuddly and sociable. It'll yeah. be worth your time. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you too. Um, and there's just so much other thing, so many other things that we will be doing and I cannot wait to share with you guys, but I hope you guys love this interview. This has been Hart and... Brandon. Brandon, like and subscribe.